How's it going guys? Welcome to another episode. My name is Matt, if you don't know, and uh, we are in a uh, wood shop, uh, actually a CNC cutting shop, because we are going to be doing the floors of this van over probably the next day or two, or maybe even more. It's nice and warm in here. Don't need my hat. Won't need my jacket soon. Uh, one of the most important things is the heated floor because I'm gonna have something called a hydronic heating system and we're gonna do an innovative way of heating the floor. It's not gonna be your typical in-floor heating system and I'll show you why and how and I will show you uh, why it's special. And we're using some interesting composite board, we're using some interesting materials and we're using some interesting techniques in order to cut it out so that the pecs can provide that glycol mixture that's superheated into the floor and warm up my van. We are here, we're gonna learn about the crew that's doing it. We're gonna learn a little bit about how it's done and we're gonna have some fun. So, cool. This is Teddy. <laughs> You're gonna be what, uh, mapping out the, the floor? Old, the old one to figure out what we need to modify. This is a standard length uh, Ford Transit without the dualies, right? So we've got to compensate for the dualies and also the extra length. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting part. It <laughs> might mean you'll have to have four sheets to do your thing okay. instead of only three. Yep. Because I only had, I think, like six inches of extra room in the last one. <laughs> okay. Let me clean out the inside so you got a better work area. They are trying to map it out so that they can provide the same templates for all the different types of vans that are out there. I have a Ford Transit extra long, but I also have the Dooleys, and they've never done the uh, this sort of a system for this sort of a van, so they're going to have to take the existing templates that they have for the uh, Ford Transit normal, normal length, uh, standard length with uh, non-Dooleys, and they're going to have to make some tweaks. Hopefully, it's mostly the same just has a few uh, extra, uh, extra measurements that they gotta add in there so that they can cut the floor out. The, everything here is cut with CNC, so it's, it's very, very accurate, and the lines are very, very uh, smooth, and uh, it'll hopefully go together uh, in a cinch, hopefully. So that one's good. That one's good to go. This'll be interesting, right? Because this'll tell you pretty much what those wheel wells are going to need. Yeah, I've already got it. I'm going to slice that. So on, on van lifers, you have this huge opening here in the, in the door, and a lot of people utilize the fact that you're really only using this as a, as a step into the van. And they, a lot of people's cabinets actually come all the way out to here. So this section here will be a, a like sort of like a, a small opening for storage of maybe sandals or something. Keeping the uh, dirt and stuff out of the interior of the van is a, is a big problem because obviously people are coming in and out. So I might actually put some brushes here so that people can kind of brush their shoes off. Obviously you probably don't want them bringing the shoes in at all. But a brush to actually get some of the major dirt off would be a good thing too. Maybe that's like a cleaning station. Stick to that lizard skin you got. <laughs> I can't wait till that. The lizard skin is cool and everything, but it's not beautiful. <laughs> like, I want to cover that shit up. <laughs> I went a little crazy with application and just gopped it on. Oh, I appreciate this. I made this. Oh, yeah? yeah. You made the entire. Yeah, that's iteration two. That's Gen two prototype. No shit. It's a flat blade screwdriver, a can opener. It's an it's a solid blade. You did the carbon fiber. Uh, I did everything. It's my design and everything. No way. Can anybody buy it? Uh, I used to have a website. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. They're fun to make. It takes a long time. Yeah, they're doing some cool stuff at this shop, not just for 
vans for all sorts of moving livable spaces. These are going into a, a box that's going to sit on top of a massive F F550, a, bi a big old, big old truck. They're being cut by uh, the CNC machine into some really, really specific shapes in order to design the interior of this space. And it's got this really, really interesting hardware. These Festool kits have, what are these, like anchors, basically. So, for instance, okay, this comes off the machine. It's got these little engraving lines here. Uh -huh. So you would use this tool Domino. Like a biscuit. Yep. Cutter. You line up that line with those engraving lines. That makes your putt there. Then from there you would take and use this jig here. That fits inside of the hole. Like that. Okay. You drill that. Yep. And it turns into that. Okay. So then from there, what you would do is you take this and we'll go back over here. So you would take this piece here, drop it through the hole, then this goes through the slot. Plugs onto it. Captures it, yep. And then your other side, this goes into the slot. As you tighten this, this expands. And then these are your two mating parts here that go together with the set, set screw. Yep. And then once that spreads out, those two things are... Yep, your money. Forever. Yep. On this particular build, we're using permanent Loctite, and it's actually probably stronger than wood glue and so rather than doing glue and clamps inside of an RV this is a much easier system so. how many of these are you going to use on the whole project you think I think I budgeted for close to 250 something like that <laughs> wow. yeah so uh, we'll figure it out we're kind of going using them sparingly only where we need to and then we fill the other spots with dominoes oh, yeah. so just to try to you know for alignment purposes all of this was cut on that machine over there yep so this is straight off the machine, very little modification by hand. Like, I was just marking out some holes for hinges that we had forgotten. You're gonna miss a few with all these parts, so. What's the box called? A uh, Globe that, Trekker. A Globe Trekker. Yeah, Globe yeah. Trekker RV, check them out. Yeah, and all of these are, are just taken out for, just to reduce weight as much as possible, while you still keep the structure. Now a question I've gotten a few times is why would you be interested in a heated floor? And it's a good question. There's a lot of people who think a furnace is enough to warm the environment inside a van. It's not that much space, right? The problem lies in the fact that as soon as you open the sliding door, almost all of the air inside the van is going to escape out and you're going to be basically back to zero. When you heat the floor itself, the lining of the van, the actual surface of the van is warm. So that if you do open this door and all of the air escapes out, by the time you close that door, the surfaces of the, of the van will work towards rewarming that van. I've also obviously coated the floor with a thermal barrier from Lizard Skin, and I'm using some real high-tech materials that will make up the floor that will also help to direct the heat and also retain the heat inside the floor. The system that I'm gonna be having is a hydronic system. So hot liquid, uh, a glycol style liquid, not unlike antifreeze, some people actually use antifreeze, will be heated and then course through the floor and then warm the entire surface. The cool thing about hydronic heating also is that, that that superheated fluid can go and serve multiple purposes. Not only can it heat the floor, but it can also run through a plate that will make uh, basically almost contact, but not contact, with your freshwater system as well, and it'll heat up your freshwater instantly. That eliminates the need for, say, a hot water tank that a lot of people use in these vans. You can also use that fluid to run through a radiator and then drive air through a superheated radiator, and you can also get your hot air that is pushed through the van. So you can kind of do three jobs with one system very efficiently as well because the system is tapping in to your fuel system, whether you're using diesel or in this case gas, 
and you're just taking minute amounts of fuel to run through the furnace and actually heat up the liquid. So it's, an, it's a very efficient system and electronically it's very efficient and it balances the heat distribution throughout the van because this floor is going to be heated all the way to the back, all the way to the front, all the way from side to side. You're not depending on a register that's pushing air and you might have a really hot corner. If you want to stay warm, you go in that corner. In this case, uh, the whole floor of the van will be heated and I'll also have the ability to have that pushed air driven through as well. So you'll have multiple options to keep your van warm. I've also talked to some people that said, you know, why are you even getting this? Because you can migrate to warmer climates. You don't need to stay in the cold areas and you can uh, just move to a warmer area when things start getting cooler. Well, first of all, there's a lot of cool things that happen in the cooler areas at the cooler times of year and I want to be able to go to those areas and not be limited by the fact that maybe my van isn't warm enough to, to go to those areas in the winter time. Secondly, my tour is sort of a movement around the world and sometimes I don't have the luxury of saying I'm going to wait out the winter before I go through this area because my path is going to be sort of winding around the world and I don't want a limitation to say well my van isn't uh, thermally equipped for that place. By having a robust heating system, by having a robust cooling system, and by, ha by having a robust insulation system, I can assure myself that I can go where I want, when I want, to do the videos that I want to pass on to you guys through the studio that will be in this van. So having an advanced heated floor system and a hydronic heating system is, uh, is going to make me way more capable when I'm doing my tour around the world. So my intention is as you enter the van, to have an area here that will be cut all the way down to the floor of the van. And this will be an inset shower pan that will drain water and it'll basically go straight down right here into the undercarriage where there will be a gray water tank. There was a bunch of YouTubers that I watched before I designed the interior of the van or laid out the basic framework. And some of them had floor to ceiling showers. I didn't like those because it broke up the uniformity of the van and, and a shower that you might use briefly at one point a day, you're taking up huge real estate inside an already cramped environment. So instead, I watched a couple of people that put their shower area at the entryway of the van. It won't be even noticeable as a shower because what you're going to do is you'll have the shower pan that will be inlaid into the floor and then there will be like a wooden bamboo lattice that will inset perfectly into that area even with the floor when it's all finished. It will look a bit like a welcome mat but when you want to take a shower what you'll do is you'll stand here and then I'll have metal points that will be uh, engraved around the outside edge that will match up with magnetic uh, points into a shower curtain and it will magnetically seal itself into the drainable area and then I will be able to take a shower standing here with a shower curtain wrapped around me using either the sink that will be right here for, for my kitchen or uh, maybe even uh, plumb something into the ceiling itself. But I think maybe keeping it simple, I'll just have a long arm that I can pull off the sink here and then I won't splash anything. It'll come right down into the bamboo mat and then down underneath into the gray water tank. There are some really cool solutions for this and we'll be getting into that a little bit later but for now because I'm going to have the heated floor system I want to make sure that I go around the proposed area where I will have that shower because that area is actually going to go all the way down to the base so this area will not be warmed because I just don't, don't want to use that space for warming I want to use that space for a hidden shower that I'll use when I need it. sheets and we export them the rough floor in there in about 20 minutes. Neat! 
because since this stuff's so thin, we can do it one pass. It's so big, we don't have to worry about tabs or anything. Yeah. These machines make things so much easier, right? The, the longest time it takes is actually taking the, the MDF from the stack and putting it on the table. The rest is... So you need to cut more off the wheel well edge? Yeah, I just I'm just gonna take them and just go bloop. This is the process where you iron out any mistakes before you cut the final floor. All this is is sort of like a template. If you're gonna make any mistakes, you make them now, you know. There we go. Oh. Get out of there. <laughs> you did this. Cool. I mean, it looks like it's fine this way. Yeah, everything seems to match up. This is going to go a little higher. You're going to have to cut this a little bit because of the inch uh, floor is going to cut into these. Yes, yes, yes. So, in theory, we can. We just start cutting the next one. Yeah. Or start designing your heated floor and then uh, we can start cutting. The Are you going to cut the heated floor in as well as the forms? It'll all happen at the same time? Okay. So yeah, like. because the heated floor will be the slots that run yep. through. So it'll all happen at once. It'll cut these uh, yes. tongue and grooves and everything. Yeah, and these tongue and grooves might have to shift just a little depending on where the heated floor hits. Okay. Oh yeah, because otherwise you'll run over some of yeah, these corners. Yeah, we don't want to hit the corners if we don't have to. Okay. But luckily, in the software I use, I can grab individual control points, and I can literally just, just grab them and pull it and pull push it. it. Exactly. Yeah. So like that's what I'm going to do with your wheel wells. I need yeah. like a three sixteenths that way and. Maybe a quarter inch over here, just in case. Draw around these little guys. Your pan that goes in that corner. Yeah. I'll throw that in. The jacuzzi. Leave the cutout for the jacuzzi. All right. So that's where your pan's gonna be. Cool. Roughly. Yeah. And then your the pex comes up right here. All right, so what's the next step? <laughs> we gotta figure out all the swiggles. Okay, we, gotta, okay. we gotta figure out where the PEX actually loops back and forth uh, right. within the file, see if it interrupts with any of the, the dovetails in the joinery, and then, um, and then we're ready to cut. What's any like rules of, of PEX? Like the curvature can only be a certain radii, right? Yeah, we, we actually did a test and we can bend it all the way down to I think a four inch diameter, I believe. Okay. But, nothing but more we narrow. we try to make it about a six, okay, six or a seven, yeah, because there's the metal flashing that also goes on it, and if you, with a four inch diameter, the flashing is touching, oh. which means you have no space in between it to anchor it down, and well, we don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> got it. We'll sit down and kind have of some fun, some computer time. Yep. Kind of the cool thing about Portland is uh, when it's lunchtime, when you want to eat, there's always like 
mobile mobile food places. Hey, How's it going? Let <laughs> hey, me have a strawberry milkshake and uh, a fish wish. Absolutely. Cool. These yellow little plates you see are Those are heat distribution. Like, yep. They're reflectors. Exactly. Warm floors await. So this is the uh, material that we're using for the floor. It's, it's pretty cool. You see the machine right now is just taking as much meat off as possible. Look at how clean these go together. The heated floor will go up here and all of the uh, components for the comfort hot are going to be there. Okay, so what they're going to do now is they're going to take this little itsy bitsy bit and they're going to etch everywhere there's uh, piping underneath. So this is going to sit on the top of the floor and it's going to indicate where the PEX piping is, where the heating is going through. 